What's going on guys? Here today with some vital information to hopefully help you improve the health of your garden and make it more efficient. So this is a DLI calculator and DLI is the amount of PAR that our surface receives over a day. And with this, we can find the point of light saturation in anybody's garden. This shows us when the plant is no longer able to process the light anymore. By entering the amount of PPFD at your canopy and the amount of hours you are running the light, you can find your DLI. They also included a chart for outdoor growers that shows the DLI that you're going to get in the region that you're in. Um, down here at the bottom is the chart. And I like to basically refer to it as a VPD chart for light. On the left hand side you will see the PPFD at the canopy and up top is the hours of light per day. The dark pink is where the plants have reached the point of light saturation. So we just want to stay on just the other side of that. So technology has been advancing when it comes to lighting, but we haven't necessarily changed any of our methods to compensate for the increase in efficiency and overall light output. So have you guys ever gone into your grow room two to three hours before the light shut off and you see that your plants are droopy, they've already basically gone to sleep? I think that this is a clear indicator that your plants have reached a point of light saturation and they no longer need it. So the theory up until now has been that too much light isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I really think that we need to revisit that. Wolverine Grower brought this up to me recently during a clone swap. He told me that the West Coast growers were adopting different light cycles in veg and flower. 16-8 in veg and 10-14 in flower. So I decided to give it a shot. I switched to 16 hours of light on and 8 hours off and immediately saw an improvement in my plants. I believe that since the LEDs are pushing specific nutrient uptakes, usually more magnesium is required in nutrient regimens to compensate. Um, the plants might be getting pushed into deficiency with excess light. So I've always noticed that in veg, if I had any purpling of the stems, it always seemed to get worse the closer to the light that it, they got. And so I'd always dim my lights down or move my lights up to prevent this from happening. But in doing so, I was also not getting the stacking that I was hoping for by exposing it to the high intensity lighting. Um, so this chart basically shows how to run the high intensity lighting without having any of those drawbacks. And shortly before it came out, I actually switched to 14 hours of light, five hours of darkness, one hour of light, and four hours of darkness, and I was having great results. Um, the one hour of light in the middle of the dark cycle is just to make sure that uh, you don't completely flip over your photo period and flip into flowering. So once the chart came out, I took some readings and I realized that I was right in that 700 PPFD range, so it all made sense. This chart can also help us in flower, I believe, because nowadays 1000 PPFD isn't really that hard to achieve, but it is hard to keep up with. Um, I'm always experimenting and trying to get better results in my garden, and when I got my photo booth strips, I did exactly that. I saw this study from Lumigro that showed red exposure within 72 hours of harvest drastically degraded terpenes. Um, so with the reds in the photo boost not being on a separate channel, I decided to dim the lights down for the last two weeks. Uh, the test results that came back were the best that I had ever seen. Um, one strain's terpenes were double that I had ever seen before, and I was getting THC increases of 1, 2, and 3% in other strains. So I assumed it was because there was less red light exposure. But the next run, I got a Raging Kush from Science, and I was really excited to test this theory out further because the Raging Kush had the capability of dimming back the reds entirely. So I dimmed them back for the last two weeks and got the flower tested. Um, the results that came back were the same results that I was getting beforehand. So I was kind of stumped. Um, but now seeing this chart, I'm realizing that by dimming the lights back, I had made it so the plants weren't hitting that point of light saturation. So my hypothesis is that in late flower, once the plants can't process that light any longer, any excess light may be degrading the THC and the terpenes. 
When we get into our first round in the facility, my plan is to start off flower at 11 hours of light and 13 hours of darkness. And as I acclimate the plants to the higher intensity light, um, I slowly raise the light levels over the first two weeks until I get to that 1000 ppfd across the canopy. And at which point I'm, I'm probably gonna dial back to 10 hours of light and then 14 hours of darkness. And then for the last three weeks, I wanna run nine hours of light and 15 hours of darkness and run some tests to see if we can get that same jump in THC and terpenes. So not only will we be saving power, but hopefully we will see an overall increase in quality as well. Um, I hope that you guys found this information valuable and useful. I know I did. Uh, if you guys have anything else to add to this theory, feel free to drop it in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Peace out.